Hey Thomas, this is Jason and Diana here. We're going to talk about the uh, heads. You know, it's hard that you're not here, so I can't explain, and she can't explain what we go on, got going on. But here's the other set of heads that run the back of the truck, and then these are the heads that we took took off. And Diana's explained this to me, but she'll interject when I screw up when I'm telling you. You know, you can see here the bolts that broke off. You can see right there, you can see the, the threads. And so we had a total of six break off. You know, we could obviously drill those out and hopefully that goes well. And sometimes you gotta heal a coil, coil them. Um, but really what Diana saw here, the main uh, concern, you know, anytime you take something apart, there's, you're gonna find out different things even though it runs really, you know, really good and you know, you get into this stuff and you just plan on changing exhaust manifolds. But you can see here, and I want to show you, this one here is, you know, pretty flat. You can see that. But the problem is, you can see here, we've got sunken sunken valves. You can see the, the step right there, and there's no step on that one. It's, it's, it's very flat all the way across. And you can see this one's very, very sunk. This one's not bad. This one's not too bad. That one. This one here is really bad. You can just see the, the depth there. Same thing with that. And this one's, got some this one's just a little bit. But if you look over here on these other heads that you got, you know, we slipped in one of the valves. We haven't put them all in, but see how nice and flat that is? across there that's what you want and I think I don't you know these heads haven't been machined yet but you can see here that's it's real shiny around the the edge there they might have cut that already but the valves haven't been cut you know obviously these been to some kind of shop of some sort because you know they cleaned all this they might have sandblasted all that but they didn't really do the rest of the head or finish um, mm -hmm. You can see here they've got some Gila coils here already in. And here. Yeah, right there. And that one does not. This one here, the thread's messed up, so we'd probably have to heal a coil that one. But I would probably, at this point, my original plan was thinking to save these heads um, because we didn't want to have to put those together because these are already together. But if you're planning on keeping this truck a long time and really driving it, uh, you know these sunken valves need to be fixed and <clears throat> they'd have to be all all reseated and everything cut and stuff so these heads are actually going to be really expensive probably twice as much to do those ones than these ones that i can get you some prices and stuff but i mean if it's if it was our rig we'd actually put these these on it because it's, it's just going to be really expensive on the other and the other thing uh too you know in the cylinders I'll show you out there on the engine uh, real fast. You know, some of this, these sunken valves and stuff, leaking and different stuff can cause it issues. Here how wide it is. Yeah, talk and about that, Diana. Been running lean uh, here and there, been running lean, way lean, which will cause a burnt valve and cause it to sink and burn out. Yeah, so you can see what she's talking about, how white, you know, some of these are, look at that. You know, so and there's evidence in the engine actually too that uh, you know that it, it has been burning uh, lean and maybe causing issues from this but we suggest going you know taking these in the machine shop and, and having these ones done on it. it's just going to be better and you know make sure they're they're all true and one of the issues that you can have too of redoing the heads and it just all depends what you want to do we're not trying to make more work for ourselves at all because we have a lot of stuff to do as well but um, you can have issues, you know, when you bump up the compression here by rebuilding all these, you have problems on the, on the engine on the, on the bottom end. So here we took some of the valves, you know, that were in the box there. Uh, you can see there's a lot of meat on the edge, but you can see they haven't machined them or anything like that or did a valve job. So you can see the shiny this here, so they did clean up the edges there. Uh, but the, one of the problems Diana was saying, you know, that, I mean, look at this one, all the carbon on that. You know, this thing was burning oil, um, the engine that this came out of. But um, 
one of the things is the guy didn't put any of these in order so we don't know which one with what went to what and so when they go to the machine shop he's gonna have to kind of figure that out and then the spring tensions yeah you know they can kind of vary a little bit so he's gonna have to you know do a little bit more leg work it was actually probably it would have been better if they would have numbered these or or Left something together <laughs> yeah so um kind of funny they they used silicone silicone yeah, the wrong stuff too i might add yeah that's the wrong they stuff did it, but um anyways i still think these are probably the heads that we should use because it that, that's just going to cost you a lot of money yeah, and those are the new over manifolds there. yeah and we'll have to double check too we have ones that are cracked yeah but we'll have to make sure these are flat nice and flat yeah this one looks really clean this one almost looks new yeah and we'll just have to make sure everything's flat here and the other thing too um you know actually we're looking at these are flat uh, the intake manifold, which we had a 428, we had to check this uh, before. If they do any machining here, uh, those intake manifolds actually can get kind of, kind of warped. You know, going across okay. here. So we'll put a flat edge, and if they're not, he has to machine these down, and you have to do everything kind of in, in unison. And he'll take this piece off here, and sometimes carbon gets all up in the back there but we'll just have to make sure everything's flat anyways if we're just going with with the heads so um but it'll be nice to gasket all this this is kind of nice that the intake underneath there is actually you know pretty clean but and we, we also want to make sure this gets pulled off yeah when it goes mm -hmm. in the hot tank so it cleans all the yeah. carbon build up underneath it yeah and at this time you know since we've got the motor so far apart um you know we're obviously going to paint if you want to it's up to you but do our regular detail under the motor and paint it and, and everything and, you know, kind of make the engine compartment look pretty new. Okay, here we are. We're going to take a look underneath the, the hood. They have 250. So we can just talk about some of the, more of the engine, engine stuff here and, you know, plans, what we're going to do next. So here we are on the engine. Took the intake manifold off and the you know the, the heads obviously and you can see why we would have problems taking out those stupid bolts getting in here and and uh, trying to drill those out but i'll let diana talk about the engine in general okay. here you, and the concerns yeah if you look here you can see where it's been burning more lean here where you got carbon here now you got a little here going on not much here not much there other side here Down in here, we have a scrape. It's right down through here, right where my pen's running. It's not carved into the cylinder, but there is a gouge in it. Hopefully you can see that, that, you know, I can't really, I can feel it just a tiny bit on my finger, not much. Yeah, this could be a, a, a possible broken ring. It could be the ring just carving into it. And when you put new heads on that are all rebuilt, you raise the compression, that's possible. We could blow the rings out of it. And so it'd be recommended to do rings and also do you know rod bearings at the same time, and the so, next step. So Diana, if, you know if you're going to keep it, you know Thomas, it just depends on how long you want to keep the truck, and you know we could probably put the heads on it, and the you know have those ones rebuilt, and it'll probably run for a long time. But it's just it's just it's already apart here. We don't you know you don't want to cause any more damage, and maybe something will happen. Maybe something won't. Um, and Diana, how would you go about doing this in general if you were going to put the, the ring? I mean, it sounds overwhelming, Thomas, but the, you know, we don't have to pull the motor out. Yeah, you, you just pull the oil pan off underneath, and once the oil pan's off, we can take these out one at a time. And every piston that comes out, we'll clean up the top, we hone the cylinder, and then we put new rings on it, we put new rod bearings in it, put it right back together, and we just go all the way around and do it all the way down it and make sure it's all torqued up and ready to go at this time would we have to check the cam or anything would we'll go the ahead cam looks pretty good i can see through here through the mm -hmm. small hole i can see what lobes there are they do look good uh, i will try and pull the lifter out to make sure it's not mushroom in fact uh here let's try that right now while we got you on film let's we'll see if i can do it with this here pen because if it's mushroom i should have brought that little puller that yeah I, that i had in my pocket there we go Uh, 
Well, that's not a good sign now, is it? Uh, we got a few problems there. There, there goes. we go. That actually looks really good. It doesn't look too bad. It's just got a lot of, you can see the dirt. Yeah. And, you know, that's just old oil right there. Do you think uh, this probably try to pull them out and clean them up and I'd pull them out and clean them just to make yeah. sure they're fine and then what else would you suggest why we we're doing this I think you were talking about timing chain well if we take the engine apart if we take it apart more rather than just doing the rings if we did more as far as main bearings and all that then we would take it out we would do a timing chain it would be a good idea to check it at this point you can see it's not much more to take off to do that timing chain which is under this cover right yeah. here probably change the water pump too yeah and uh if we have to put a timing chain in it we'd also end up putting all the seals in there you get timing cover seal you get the the uh seal behind the balancer here uh the only one i can't replace is the one behind the uh the engine there the rear main if it looks like it's leaking would definitely be the time to do it <laughs> you know um I was uh, thinking about the heads, you know, the original heads that were on here, you know, I was talking about being twice as much money at the machine shop and stuff, but would they, you know, since those valves are shrunken, or, you know, they're sunk, does that mean you'd put new valves in it? They would put new seats, new and seats. they would put to a hardened seat, which would be better with the unleaded fuels today, uh, and they may have to, it depends on the valve, and without seeing the valves uh, facing, you, you really can't make okay. that determination yet yeah so i so, think really probably going putting those other the other heads i would go with the other heads um you know unless you want to go and do the full monty <laughs> yeah know? another story Which entirely i don't think he wants to do so right. thomas hopefully that is information that is going to be helpful when we discuss it um again i'm not trying to um, nickel and dime you or anything like that. I just want it to be a good motor for you and a good experience because it is actually a really good truck. And but it's just you know when you get an older motor and stuff like that, um, <clears throat> you know you just find things out when you you take it apart. And so we'll just have to figure out exactly uh, what the next steps are. So it's all uh, doable and stuff. And and it's got at least 115 thousand on this one. Yeah. So. That's what at least we figure out from the odometer. So. From looking at it, Diana, too, did, does it look like it had ever been apart before? Um, no, I would tell you, see all this? Yeah, I saw those numbers, numbers there. That's all factory stuff. Yeah. This is the first time it's ever been open. Yeah. So, so um, you know. I think I think, Thomas, if we do this stuff, you know, especially the, the whole thing is if you're going to keep it for a long time and actually drive this thing, then probably doing all this other stuff is a good idea. If you're not going to keep it a long time, you know, uh, probably just put it back together, you know, do good things to it and not worry about the bottom end stuff. But, um, I mean, the right thing to do while we're already here would probably be to, to fix that stuff. It just depends and you can, at the same time, we can put a new oil pan gasket on it and, you know, new head gaskets, everything. So, um, I'll uh, shoot this over to you and we can discuss some more. I'll get you some prices and stuff and um, we'll go from there. Thank you.